Hello everyone, Chris Peterson here again, bringing you another um, commentary on the Salute to Bobby Fischer, Round 2, this one's going to be. Um, if you haven't seen Round 1, I strongly encourage you to watch that first. I might be making references back to that, so um, here's a link right here if you want to go back to that. Um, so Round 2, I'm going to be playing against Brian Wall, who is a fairly close friend of mine. Um, someone I've played many times in the past, and I'm one of the few players in the state that actually has a plus record against him uh, up to this game. So, um, yeah, so that's a thing. Then, um, yeah, so I guess uh, let me do a little introduction to the game. So, um, before the start of round two, I was trying to take a nap in the room. Um, I, I, I rented a room at the at the tournament site because I didn't want to drive back and forth because I'm lazy like that. And uh, Ted Doikos and Brian Wall wanted to look at their game because they played round one. And I couldn't help but watch and add my two cents. So I, I was tired, I was hungry, and I tried to get Brian to come with me to get some food, but he said anytime he goes to lunch with someone uh, before the round, he ends up getting paired against, against them. Uh, and since I did not want to play him right away necessarily, I, I, I stomached my hunger and uh, checked the parents. So, um, yeah, so I ended up getting paired against Brian Wall anyway. And uh, I guess we should have just gone to lunch <laughs> since we got paired. Uh, and I joked with Brian before the game um, saying, let's draw quickly so we can go eat. And, of course, I had no intention of playing for a draw. I I dislike draws, and I would rather lose than draw most of the time. It, it is kind of a backward way of thinking, I guess, but I feel if one settles for a draw without testing all avenues of attack, then, you know, they, they didn't try hard enough. So I, I was going to try my damnedest to beat Brian. So, uh, so the game started at E4, um, and then Brian played A6, so I was white. Uh, Brian was black, so... Brian has been playing this a6 move as black all year. He, ha he has had some success with it. It is not entirely bad for his move. I mean, uh, Grandmaster Tony Miles played it against Karpov and won uh, a, a while ago. Um, and, I mean, it can easily transpose into many different lines, uh, many different lines, including the a6 Slav, uh, a Nador of Sicilian, um, and uh, a Bononi, just to, to name a few of those openings. Uh, so I played d4, um, he played e6, knight f3, c5, knight c3, c takes d4, knight takes d4, and now pawn to b5. And, and now it's basically turned into a con Sicilian. So I played bishop to d3, and now he played bishop d6, which, you know, it's, it's a hideous move. It, it is the antithesis of how to develop in the opening. He's exposing the bishop to attacks along the d-file. He's blocking potential d5 pawn breaks. He's weakening the dark squares around his king. And I just feel like this move just needed to be punished. So um, so I played bishop e3. Uh, he played knight f6. Then I played f4, threatening to fork his bishop and knight. Uh, then he plays b4 and then I played knight d5 and I joked with people after the game that I didn't even last 10 moves before I started sacrificing and this you know, pseudo sacrifice looked stronger than trying to retreat and re-maneuver and I was trying to grab control over his dark squares with a knight forever planted on f5 so he played 9 uh, e takes d5 and then I played knight to f5 and technically, this move is a blunder. It allows him to consolidate his position. However, in order to do so, he needs to play a move like bishop to f8, undeveloping his pieces. Um, I let Brian stay in the hotel room overnight, uh, but he had trouble sleeping. He said he kept having nightmares that I was playing two people at once, and they were forcing, me, uh, forcing my pieces back to their original squares. So... Um, yeah, so undeveloping your pieces is just a, if you have to do it, I mean, you have to, but uh, if you have to do it, <laughs> you're pretty much already losing, so. Um, 
so if he wanted to, he, um, or, well, what I should have played is 10, pawn to e5, uh, bishop c5, e takes f6, queen takes f6, queen e2, uh, then castles kingside, queen h5, g6, and then queen takes d5. And this is an interesting line that, that could have happened in the game, but uh, it didn't. So. Uh, so then he castled kingside. So just as some uh, sample lines, if he would have played bishop to f8, e takes d5, um, d6, not knight takes d5 because of queen f3 with a good game for, for white. Uh, then castles kingside, bishop takes f6, uh, sorry, bishop takes f5, um, not uh, 12 g6 because of uh, rook to e1. So then 13, bishop takes f5, g6, bishop d4, g takes f5, queen e1 check, knight e4, bishop takes h5, and black is doing perfectly fine. Um, so going back to the game, um, I played 11, knight takes d6, d takes e4, and I could take the pawn back with a good game, but I was afraid he would start counterattacking me along the e-file, so I opted to keep some pressure on his king. Uh, so then 12, bishop c4, a5, g4. And I was amazed to find out that this move uh, was Fritz 13's number one pick. Um, the computer almost never likes to start pawn wave attacks, and especially with... Um, when it's not yet castled. So my theory is that because black's development is so far behind that my king is perfectly safe. Um, so 13, knight c6, uh, pawn g5, knight to e5, and then I played f5. And admittedly, I, I got a little overzealous with this move. I, I thought my bind on the dark squares could keep him from taking the knight on d6, develop, basically developing my queen. Though the position is still equal after knight takes d6, according to the computer, I lost all of my advantage. Um, <coughs> so, uh, then he played knight to e5, uh, 1595, and after this move, Brian already used an hour and 15 minutes on his clock. I whispered if he keeps taking 20 minutes to move, uh, we'll never get dinner, but, you know, whatever. Uh, so then 16, knight takes f7. And uh, this move is, I mean, it's really the only move in the position. It's uh, its just a strong way to demolish the light squares around his king. Um, so uh, basically, within 16 moves, I gave away two pieces. And I hesitate to call this a sacrifice since I am guaranteed to get some material back with pawn to g6. Um, but, I mean, either way, it's kind of cool to play this kind of chess against a, a master and a, a, you know, someone 300 points higher rated than you. So, uh, 16, knight takes f7. Um, if he tries rook takes f7, and I play g6, knight takes c4, g takes f7 check, king takes f7, queen d5 check, uh, king f8, and then queen takes c4. And, I mean... I'm not even down any material for, for all this awesome play that I have, so that line would have been much better for me. <coughs> um, so back to the game, 17, g6, bishop b7. Um, he could have tried 17, queen h4, check, uh, and then bishop f2, queen e7, g takes f7, check, rook takes f7, queen d5, uh, bishop a6, Queen takes f7, check. Queen takes f7. Bishop takes f7, check. King takes f7. And I'm up an <coughs> and I'm up an exchange for a pawn in the ending. Uh, it would be difficult because of Brian's skill at moving pawns up the board. Um, he he has this knack of getting past pawns and like uh, connected past pawns just rolling up the board. So it's something that I kind of have to be worried about. Um, so instead of that, um, I'm still winning in that position, but it, I think it would have been a little bit harder for me because uh, Brian has that ability with his pawns. 
So another possibility is uh, 17 King H8. And uh, Brian was claiming that this move won after the game uh, as a joke, obviously, since he kept he kept interrupting me basically when I was trying to uh, brag to like uh, the Alters, which is a, a local chess family, and uh, Katie Wise, who's a, a player out of Colorado Springs, and uh, whoever else would listen. <laughs> uh, so I pretty much had to throw this into my my commentary. Um, yeah, so King H8, uh, G takes a, uh, G takes F7, uh, Knight C7, uh, Queen H5, Queen F6, castles Queen side, D5, which is the only move for him. Uh, bishop takes D5, Knight takes D5, Rook takes D5, uh, Bishop A6, uh, Bishop D4, Queen F7, Queen H6, uh, followed by Rook G1. And with even material and a strong attack, I think white is winning here. And, and the computer agrees, giving me a plus six. So Brian might be slightly wrong with his winning uh, analysis. So keep that in mind. Um, so let's go all the way back to move 18, um, where instead... Um, so after he played uh, bishop b7, I played g takes f7 check, rook takes f7, Bishop takes f7 check, king takes f7, queen h5 check, king g8, rook g1, knight f6, queen h6, queen e7, uh, bishop d4. So with bishop d4, I'm basically setting a, a sneaky little trap. Uh, black needs to either defend the knight or get out of the pin. The obvious defense loses material. So rook f8, which is the obvious defense, uh, loses material pretty quickly. Um, he could have tried rook to a6, but then after just castles queenside, a move like king h8, queen f4, rook a8, bishop f6, uh, g takes f6, uh, queen d6. I'm, I mean, white's just doing great. Um, yeah, so... I mean, either one of these lines are, are pretty convincing for white. So, uh, so 24, uh, bishop c5. And uh, pinning, <coughs> um, uh, pinning, or skewering, I should say, uh, the queen to the rook. And the queen can't take the bishop because of the mate on g7. <coughs> uh, so he plays queen f7. Uh, bishop takes f8. And... Now I'm up two exchanges for a passed e4 pawn. And Brian kept playing because he had delusions of a second queen on e1. And, you know, whatever. Uh, so 25, king takes f8, queen f4, uh, bishop c6, queen d6 check, king g8, uh, castles queen side, knight to e8, queen e5, a4, and f6. Now... This move is subtly powerful. It rips open another file for my rooks to operate around his king. Um, so he just played knight takes f6, and the computer actually recommends not capturing that pawn. Um, but Brian believed he was starting to get back into the game because his pieces are starting to coordinate a, a little better. Um, but uh, according to Fritz, you know, he's minus 7 right now. Uh, so rook f to d1. Uh, King f8 only move to avoid losing material, or more material, I should say. Um, then he plays queen, uh, sorry, then I played queen b8 check, and I was enticed by a potential blunder that Brian could have made. Um, I should have played rook g5, and this move looks relatively benign, uh, but it has some powerful ideas behind it. Um, for example, queen e7. Um, I can play rook takes f6 check, queen takes f6, um, then rook f5, winning winning his queen. And then it would just be my queen versus two minor pieces. Or versus one minor piece, actually. Um, and if instead he tried uh, 32 bishop d5, then I can play rook g to f5. Uh, pawn to b3, cb3, ab3, and then uh, rook takes f6 is winning black's queen again. Um, and then 
if instead of queen takes f6 check, he tries g takes, I'm sorry, if instead of uh, queen takes f33, queen f6, um, then I, uh, bleh. okay, so if instead of uh, 33, queen takes f6, he tries 33, g takes f6, then rook g8 check, king f7, rook g7 check, uh, king takes g7, and then queen takes e7 check. Um, wins this queen again. Um, so, I mean, I was trying to trick him into falling for something similar to uh, those sequence of moves with my check, um, but the rook g5 move is just so much more forcing and, you know, it's just really convincing right away. Um, so he just played king e7, 32 king e7. That's the only move. Obviously, you can't play, you know, queen e8 because of rook takes f6 check, uh, followed by rook g8 check. Um, and he can't play, uh, rook f's, uh, he can't play king e7 after rook takes f6 because of, uh, rook takes g7 check. Wins his queen again. Um, so after king e7, I played rook g5. So, um, I've probably said this before, but a lot of times, uh, and this happens a lot, like, a lot. Um, and it's the difference between, like, really strong players and um, players like me and, you know, everyone else out there. Is that uh, basically everyone can see the good moves because a lot of times they're really natural. Um, but it comes down to finding the correct move order for those moves. For example, if I had played rook g5 first and then followed it up, you know, with, like, queen b8 check later maybe... Um, like, I would have just won his queen outright. But, uh, instead, I thought I could play queen b8 check first and, you know, try to trick him into falling for it when I could have just forced it. Um, so, always, like, double-check your move order um, because you're probably seeing the right moves. You're just giving the wrong move order. <coughs> um, so, after rook g5, uh, he plays uh, d6. Then I played rook to d1. And... My advantage is, is slowly slipping away. I, I'm trying to set up all these kind of cheap tactics because Brian's in time trouble, um, but I couldn't quite find the correct path to victory. And, and though my position is still plus four, um, that's nearly half of what my uh, advantage was before. So he plays uh, 98, which is a good move, prevents a lot of checks and shields himself. Uh, then I played king b1. And... Uh, again, like, I just missed a powerful tactic. I could have played rook e5 check, and this just wins the house because this king has so little maneuverability. Uh, if he plays d takes e5, I have queen takes b4 check, uh, king e6, queen c4 check, king e7, queen c5 check, king e6, queen takes c6 check, king e7, queen c5 check, king e6, queen c4 check, king e7, and then rook d7 check. Um, but, you know, instead I played, you know, the cruddy king b1. Uh, so after 35 king b1, he plays uh, pawn to b3. C takes b3, a takes b3, rook a5. And I was just trying to, like, swing my rook around and check him all um, on the 7th. Uh, so b takes a2 check, uh, king a1. I don't want to give him unnecessary exposure on my king. Uh, queen e6. Uh, Brian is almost back into the game here. My attempts at attacking him have, have basically created a fortress around his king. And on top of that, he has two connected pass pawns now. So, a lot of stuff that I have to worry about. Um, so then I played rook f1. And this is kind of a last desperate attempt at closing the game quickly. Um, so he plays bishop d7. And then I played rook a8. Uh, and then he played queen e5. And going into this move, Brian only had 31 seconds on his clock. Um, this is like the move of time control because this is a, a 40 and 2 a sudden death 1 time con time control. So this is move 39. or I'm sorry, move 40. He has to make this move in order to make time control. So, and he only has 31 seconds on his clock. And the only two moves that don't lose immediately are queen h3 and queen c4. Um, he kept glancing at his, at his clock, uh, at the clock, at his 
as his time was about to expire. And finally, with three seconds left, he makes time control. But he played a blunder that I knew how to exploit. Finally, a blunder I knew how to exploit. So uh, so he plays queen e5, and then I play queen d8 check, king e6, queen takes e8 check, bishop takes e8, rook takes e8 check, king d5, rook takes e5. And here, um, Brian ended up just resigning here because I, I have a, a very easy path to victory. I just cut off his king and push my b-pawn to, uh, to make a new queen. And I can prevent his, his pawns from queening fairly easily. Um, so that's round two. Um, that game was uh, pretty interesting. I'm fairly proud of that game just because, um, I don't know. I, it was just like constant tactics. And those are the kind of games I love. So, yeah, so that that was it. You know, leave comments, do whatever youtube allows you to do and uh i'll i'll catch you guys for round three i think some people are pretty excited about round three because uh it's against a very interesting opponent so um i'll catch you guys next game